It is amazing how, how the Lord can change things. When we measure our own way to deal with problems and situations, we, feel, we may feel so limited, like, this is it, I cannot do uh, this anymore. But then the Lord can intervene in a supernatural way, and then He changes people, situations, because that's the way He is. And we can learn to trust in the Lord as we face situations, and especially dealing with people that could be hard to deal with. We might say, how is this going to change? Like, I don't, I cannot take this anymore. But then we see God's hand, Him doing a work in the heart of other people, and He's so good in doing that. So welcome to Living Life, to today's reflection. So glad to have you here again. Genesis chapter 33, verses 1 through 11. Jacob looked up, and there was Esau, coming with his four hundred men. So he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and the two female servants. He put the female servants and their children in front, Leah and her children next, and Rachel and Joseph in the rear. He himself went on ahead and bowed down to the ground seven times as he approached his brother. But Esau ran to meet Jacob and embraced him. He threw his arms around his neck and kissed him, and they wept. Then Esau looked up and saw the woman and children. Who are these with you? he asked. Jacob answered, They are the children God has graciously given your servant. Then the female servants and their children approached and bowed down. Next, Leah and her children came and bowed down. Last of all came Joseph and Rachel, and they too bowed down. Esau asked, What's the meaning of all these flocks and herds I met? To find favor in your eyes, my lord, he said. But Esau said, I already have plenty, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. No, please, said Jacob. If I have found favor in your eyes, accept this gift from me. For to see your face is like seeing the face of God, now that you have received me favorably. Please accept the present that was brought to you. For God has been gracious to me, and I have all I need. And because Jacob insisted, Esau accepted it. In this passage, we see how Jacob is so good on organizing things. You know, he will, you know, first he, he will send the presents to, to his brother. Then he distributes his family in order to protect them. And he's doing things according to his own uh, like possibilities is I'm gonna do these things you know this way but what we saw is how his brother embraced him he uh, threw his arms around his neck and kissed him it's like like what you know we can say like how can this situation from being the fear of Jacob like what am I gonna do he hates me he's gonna kill me he's gonna take revenge on me, but then all of a sudden he meets his brother and then he's so tender, so loving, and that's, that's the miracle of the Lord. That's the way the Lord can deal with people. That's the answer to Jacob's prayer that previous night when he was so stressed out, so concerned. His brother responds with love. He wanted to get to know his uh, wives and children. And this is like, wow, you know, he says that, that he found favor in his eyes as even Esau was, wanted to go with him, wanted to help him. And, and Jacob was still like, I don't know, you know, I don't trust you. This is so hard for me. But the Lord changed Esau's heart. And, but Jacob is still in fear, you know, how we see how Jacob in his previous experiences he he's seen things, but still he's like, you know, is this for real? Like, is this happening? And that happens to all of us. But uh, the, the, the lesson here is that the Lord can do something that goes beyond our own human possibilities. Like, wow, the Lord intervening. But we need to, number one, admit, you know, that 
I cannot do this, Lord. Like, I try my own means and ways, and this is what I can get. But then we say, Lord, I really need you. And one of the things that we need to uh, learn uh, from this passage is that Jacob was uh, encountering the Lord, as we see in the previous reflection, but he was also being led by the Lord. And we need to be led by the Lord as we pray. Prayer is not just something that we do, like we express all of our needs and then say goodbye, but there is this conversation, this dialogue with the Lord where you speak and then you wait and then he speaks. That's the way Jacob had his previous uh, encounter with Jesus Christ. And uh, as we learn to bless people, as we learn to, uh, like we were saying last time, do things God's way, not our own way, our own, like, you know, kind of like, I don't know, smart ways to do things. But Lord, say, Lord, I'm going to depend on you. Yes, I, I can do things this way, but I actually want to follow your direction. And as we, and the Lord says, bless them, forgive them, love them, uh, go the, 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 the second mile, like, do what I'm telling you to do. And then the Lord uh, touch even the, the worst people. We've seen, you know, in our own experience and in, in the Bible, how the Lord changed the heart of Nebuchadnezzar, of, you know, like Pharaoh, and, or, or like Paul, you know, the apostle. He was persecuting the church. He was like, you know, hating people, but the Lord changed, you know, his, his heart. And that's the way that's uh, what the Lord can do with people. So let's keep praying for our relationships. Let's keep uh, asking the Lord for guidance. Let's keep blessing, forgiving, doing. The Bible says, do not get weary of doing good because you are going to reap in its due season. So I want to encourage you to say, Lord, I want to pray and do what is right with the people around me and wait for you to do your work. I cannot change them. I cannot, I'm not supposed to manipulate them. I am supposed to love them. I am supposed to bless them. That's what you say in your word. And as you do it, then you can see how the Lord works in an amazing way. Only He can overcome an individual's stubborn and resistance. There could be people that you say, like, there's no way this person is going to change. But the Lord is, you know, specializes in dealing with people that are hard-headed. So I encourage you to trust the Lord in your relationships, even when something seems impossible. We see how the Lord transforms and works. And this is who He is. This is His love. This is how unlimited he is, uh, he is with everything with us. So let's trust the Lord in everything, especially our relationships. I want to encourage you this time to say, Lord, I'm going to have even put in my list these other people that I never pray for. This person, this relative, that I don't know how to deal with, and I'm going to bless them. I'm going to ask you to show them your love. I'm going to ask you to open their eyes to see you, to know you. And as you do that, you're going to see what Jacob saw in his brother Esau. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the amazing lesson, how you bless Jacob and change his brother's heart. And you can do the same as we pray, as we bless. So we ask you, Lord, that we will see more miracles in our relationships because you can do everything. There is nothing impossible for you. And we thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you for meditating and thank you for taking living life as a serious thing in your life.